Hello, in this video I show you how shift reduce parsing works. It might also be called bottom up parsing. Uh, actually, bottom up parsing might refer to different kinds of algorithm, but um, in our context, if only bottom up parsing is set, then the shift reduce parsing is meant. So, and then here actually two tasks. One is to give the successful or the successful sequence. That means not all possible steps we can do, but only the one that lead to the result, to the goal. And after that, we are retrieving the rightmost der derivation from our trace. So first, um, for orientation, I will write down the tree. So we have our start symbol and we want to pass the input ABAB. And now basically, if you are doing bottom up or shift reduce parsing, what you are doing is you are looking at the uh, at the input string and then you look at your rules and see how you can um, how you can combine them so for instance you could see oh here i have an a i could get those a by a previous t or i could also get those a by the previous y and then you would have a t or a y here and that you could use in combination with other rules and other symbols and then move your way upwards to the start symbol. Now here I will just draw the so successful tree. So this is actually in the sorry, this is in this case more easily from the top. So then we would get the Z with Tz like this. The x would be derived to y and to the b, and the y would be derived to the a. So this this is just for orientation, so that we know which will our successful, uh, which our successful steps will be in the parsing. So we will start with the rest input, which is which is just the input string at first. So and then the first step we can perform is called shift. I will only write shift here. So uh, shift reduce parsing actually just contains those two rules. They are shift and reduce. So shift means I'm shifting the A or the leftmost symbol from the rest input onto the st stack. So at this, at the second line, I will have an A on the stack. And my rest input, that's everything but without the symbol I shifted, is now BAB. So then, um, well, I could now go on, shift all the stuff over there, but that would not lead to the successful trace. So in the next step, I will do some reducing and the, this A on the stack, that it corresponds to those A here in the input, so the first symbol. And as you can see, I got those terminal A by those T. So I will reduce now with this rule. So I'm reducing with T uh, derives to A. And that means I will replace those A. I will re I will replace the right hand side of the rule which I have on the stack by the left hand side. So I'm left here with a T and the rest input it is not touched, so it just stays B A B. So uh, now I performed the first reduce rule. And I can, as you can see here, I cannot reduce any further. I will need the Z to reduce further. So as next, I will do another shift step. So I will shift the B over there. 
And as you see, I'm not writing any line numbers here. Um, I could do it in the full trace, but in our successful trace, um, every line is just applied to the previous one, so I'm not writing down line numbers at, uh, in this case. So I shifted the B, so here on, this, on the rest input I'm left with A and B. Now as you can as you can see here, I can now use the B to reduce it to the Z. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to, to keep the T. So here I have the T, then I shifted the B over there and, and it's now right of the T. Sorry. Now I will reduce the, the B to the Z, so I will use the reduce rule with um, Z expands to B or Z derives to B. So then I will have the T from the previous step. Well, it would be, I think it would be more correctly to keep it right just to make us clear that it's not touched. Now I accidentally changed my pen size. So the B is now replaced, because the B is the right hand side of the rule, the B is now replaced by the left hand side, which is the Z. And the rest input is not touched. So, and now as you can see here, I will use another color. Here I can now combine the T and the Z to another T, uh, to another Z, sorry. So I will use this rule for reducing. I will reduce with Z expands to TZ. And that means I will now replace both T and Z by another Z. And as always with reducing the rest input is not touched. So and now I'm going on with it. I will reduce, uh, well I will later reduce the A, but now I have to shift it first. So I will perform another shift. I will shift the A over there, so I'm left with the Z and the A right of that. Then now I can now I can reduce the A and I have to scroll down a little bit. So I will now reduce with, with this rule Y expands to A. So the Z is just kept, the A is replaced by the Y and I will not touch the rest input. And yeah, the color is now um, not correct to save you some time. So now you can see the next step we want to perform is um, we need to shift the B so I can combine it with the Y to the X. So I will do the shift. Now the B is the B is here, and the rest input is empty, so I put here the, the empty word. And now I can, in the next step, I can reduce the X, the Y, and the B with this rule. So I'm performing a reduce with X expands to Y and B. The rest input is not touched, there's nothing left to be touched. So I will replace the Y and the B, which are my right hand side, I replace them by an X. And now in the last step, as you can probably see, now I can reduce the Z and the X to the start symbol with this rule. I have to scroll it down again. So I'm reducing with S expands to ZX. Now I'm replacing both these symbols by the start symbol. And um, this, li this line 
um, which has the start symbol. It doesn't mean need to be an S, but in our case, this is the start symbol as set in the definition. So on if there's a stack. Uh, if there's a start symbol on the stack left and nothing else, and our rest input is empty, then the word, the input string was accepted. Now we want to, um, you want to derive the rightmost derivation, because now if we are looking at the reduce rules we applied, and if you, we are applying them now in reversed order, then what we are getting is the rightmost derivation. So let's start with the start symbol. The start symbol now is expanded to z and x by applying this rule. Then, as you can see now, when I apply this rule, this is the rightmost non-terminal in those to non-terminals, so that's why it gives us the rightmost derivation. And I will replace those x by y and b. So I'm keeping the z, and the x is derived to y and b. Then the next rule we are having here is y expands to a. So I'm keeping the z, the y is replaced by the a and the b is just kept there. Then the next rule we have to apply is z expands to tz. So we are getting tz a b. Then the next rule is z expands to b. So I'm keeping the t, I'm replacing the z by our second b. And then when I apply this rule, we are getting our input string again and as you can and here you have now the rightmost derivation which we got out of our shift reduce parsing